Okay, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists, this is Patrick Penry, and I want to preface this video by reading a very small section from a chapter of Michael Rupert's book, Crossing the Rubicon. I'll link to this book as well if you haven't read it. I advise you to obtain a copy and read it in its entirety. But I will be reading from chapter 3, titled The CIA is Wall Street and Drug Money is King. I'm on page 54, and I just want to read you a couple paragraphs here. Bill Casey, Reagan's CIA director and the OSS veteran who served as chief covert wrangler during the Iran-Contra years, was, under Richard Nixon, chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission. His profession? Wall Street lawyer and stock trader. In 1984, ABC News was devoting serious attention to a CIA scandal in Hawaii connected to the investment firm BBRDW, Bishop, Baldwin, Rewald, Dillingham, and Wong. The BBRDW story was lifting a veil connected to money laundering, drugs, and the failed CIA drug bank named Nugan Hand. Bill Casey and the CIA's general counsel, Stanley Sporkin, put extreme pressure on both the network and anchor Peter Jennings to stop their coverage. During the semi-public battle, ABC stock dropped from $67 to $59 a share, and by December, the firm Capital Cities was trying to buy the network. Capital Cities successfully completed the buyout of ABC in March of 1985, after which the CIA conveniently dropped a suit against the network. Bill Casey had helped to found Capital Cities and had served both as its lawyer and as a member of its board of directors in the years between his service as SEC chairman for the Nixon and as director of central intelligence for Reagan. ABC became known thereafter as, quote unquote, the CIA network. Okay, I've given you a little bit of background on ABC News and to be very much straightforward my contention is very simple and that is that ABC News is like many other media outlets participating in a grandiose hoax and that is the hoax with Unit 4 that they are going to be able to offload spent fuel from Unit 4. In a previous video titled Fukushima Unit 4 Hoax Underway I explained that if you read the NRC FOIA documents pertaining to Fukushima and you look at what is said and discussed about Unit 4, the spent fuel pool, there's really no doubt in anyone's mind that that fuel was subject to a fire and burned up and very little, if any, is retrievable. Now this stands in direct contrast to the story that's being told by mainstream, alternative, and much of the underground media, which is that although it's going to be dangerous, they are going to offload the spent fuel from Unit 4. Again, in these FOIA documents, it paints a completely different story. So now I want to bring your attention to the Nightline piece from January of 2014. And again, if you look at the way this uh, broadcast went and the information that they give you, it's not any more convincing than the TEPCO snapshots and TEPCO video that they've been putting forth, which does not prove that they're offloading fuel from Unit 4. These generic pictures and generic footage could have been shot anywhere. Could be shot down the coast at Diani. Could be shot at Unit 5 or Unit 6 at Fukushima. We do not know. But it's very disturbing that this late in the game, we have a Nightline piece coming out that really, again, cannot prove conclusively what they say about Unit 4. So I'll play the piece for you and, and note where they say they can't not allow to use cameras to film and then note when they go into Unit 4, quote unquote Unit 4, the cameras drop to the ground. You really can't determine for certain what's going on. So again, this is very disturbing and just points to the fact what I've been saying for some time now that this is a complete hoax. They just can't be honest with you. Now, I, I wrote a piece called Fear and Loathing on Unit 4. If you have not read that, you must look into that now, okay, because that's all the evidence distilled from the FOIA documents on Unit 4, and it's such an overwhelming, overkill amount of evidence. That's what I would like to put up against this ABC Nightline piece. So let me play the piece for you, and again, I would recommend watch my Fukushima Unit 4 hoax underway video. I'll link to that, 
I'll link to the Nightline piece in its entirety. And uh, that's pretty much it. We are boarding TEPCO's bus on our way to a private tour of the power plant, but it comes with restrictions. We can't film part of the grounds for security reasons. This is the final checkpoint. We're just a few hundred meters from the power plant. They want us to turn our cameras off right now so we can't film past this police car. back on. We are now inside the Fukushima Daiichi power plant property. The alarm on my decimeter is going off telling me we're being exposed to some radiation right now. Comforting. The closer we get to the ruins of the meltdown, our radiation detectors climb. The device is going off again. We're in another hot spot. We are heading to one of the four reactors that was devastated during the accident. The radiation right here alone, about 2,000 times higher than outside Fukushima. It's going off too. I get out of this area. We shouldn't be doing interviews in a hot spot like that. This is unit four right here, the gray one. As we get closer, these radiation detectors get higher. We're going to go inside and see what kind of progress TEPCO has made on this cleanup. We're inside the building for reactor four. The world is watching, and many fear what lies beneath this murky water. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor into a safer location. Some say that this is an exceptionally delicate, very dangerous dance for TEPCO. This is a vital first step to decommission the plant. In all, it will take workers an entire year just to clean up this reactor. But so far, they've done it safely. Okay, YouTubers, I just want to pop back in and just very quickly, you know, point out a couple things in that clip. If you if you notice on the radiation readings, it's blurred. You don't get to see her dosimeter. It's inside of her pocket. It's web, webbing. You can't see through it. And it's very generic when she mentions that it's 2,000 times the radiation level higher than outside of Fukushima. She neither says we're outside of Fukushima she's referring to nor does she say what the reading is outside of Fukushima so we can't compare it to something to say it's 2,000 times higher than that plus I'd like to point out when she says we're about to walk into unit 4 play that part back and look at it it is not seamless the footage stops at least twice and then the camera comes up inside of what they allege to be unit 4 again the worrying disturbing part of all this is this late in the game we're getting this kind of generic choppy footage that does not prove their claims that they're going to be able to offload this fuel and I might add that all these places pushing this unit for offload hoax everyone that's pushing the offload hoax at the same time won't talk about FOIA documents they will not go into the FOIA documents at all okay that's all I wanted to say just saying Patrick Penry thanks for joining me have a great day. Over and out. Mm -hmm.